Sam Hinkie is one of the most controversial figures in recent NBA history, with some claiming he is a genius, while others say he is an idiot who sucked at his job. So who is he and why is he so controversial? Hinkie was hired as a 76ers general manager on May 14, 2013, in the wake of a failed trade where the team traded their best player, a future first round pick, and other assets for a player who wouldn't play a single minute for the team. After the trade and a failed season, the 76ers cleaned house and brought in Sam Hinkie to right the ship. Hinkie was tasked with building the 76ers into contenders, so he was faced with the question, how do you build a championship team? The most common answer today is that you need a superstar to win a title, due to the small size of teams and the ability for a single player to impact almost every aspect of the game. History supports this theory, with almost all the NBA champions having a superstar player, and the last dozen championships coming down to battles between just a few superstars. And you need to go back seven seasons to watch a finals without LeBron James. So if getting a superstar is what it takes to win, how would the 76ers get one? The NBA has three ways to get players. Free agency, trade, or the draft. Free agency is the simplest where you simply go out and sign a player. But recent events show us that when a top player leaves, it's only to join a stronger team. And top players wouldn't likely even pick up the phone if the 76 is called. There are also multiple rules in place for teams to hold on to their star players. And due to rookie contracts, superstars rarely leave their first team until after the first nine seasons. The second option is a trade which is risky as you need to give up a lot of assets and a failed trade can destroy a team, and the 76ers were still recovering from their last failed trade. So the final and best option for the 76ers is building through the draft. But even that isn't straightforward due to the NBA's lottery where the team with the worst record only has a 25% chance of landing the top pick. And even getting the top pick isn't enough, as some years there aren't any top players in the draft at all, or a sure thing will get hurt or turn out to be a bust. The draft is a crapshoot, with teams trying to predict how teenagers will develop against bigger and stronger players. The same Golden State Warriors who drafted Steph Curry in 2009 and Klay Thompson in 2011 wasted the sixth pick in the 2010 draft on Epe Uda while passing over players like Paul George. No one gets it right every year, not even the Warriors. All these factors make it very hard for a bad team to get better. Top players go to good teams and worse teams are stuck overpaying for the leftovers. The only real hope for the bad teams is winning big in the draft, where you need a perfect combination of timing and luck. All of this leads to a completely unbalanced NBA, where five teams own 70% of the total NBA championships. So Sam Hinkie decided to do something drastic. He realized there was no way with his current roster that he would attract top talent. And with missing draft picks, the odds were heavily against him to win in the draft. He knew there was no chance of winning a title in the next couple of years, so he saw no purpose in trying to compete. Instead, he would try to position the 76ers in the best possible position to land a franchise-altering player. Hinky started by drafting Michael Carter Williams with the 11th pick in 2013, then traded Holiday for Nerlens Noel in a 2014 first round pick, which was flipped to return their missing first round pick and picked up Sarek. Hinky then traded Allen, Turner, and Haas for second round picks and freed up cap space. Hinky then used this space and picks to get Stockis, an unprotected first, and swap rights from the Kings. Thad Young was flipped for Miami's 2016 first, and then Hinky used the space and assets acquired to also get the Thunder's 2016 first. Michael Carter Williams wasn't developing into a star, so Hinky traded him for the Lakers first while his value was still high. All these moves removed their best players and let the 76ers tank to three straight top three picks and allowed the team to grab some of the most hype prospects in basketball, as well as adding young talent through the draft. In three short years, Hinky collected an army of draft picks and filled his roster with young, promising talent while grabbing valuable draft picks from two struggling franchises. By gaining so many picks, Hinky was attempting to combat the uncertainty of the draft by increasing his chances so that even if only a quarter of his draft picks turned out, the team would still be in a good position. 
But all these moves had a drastic effect on the franchise, with the team cut dry of NBA-ready talent and instead fielding a group of teenagers who sent the 76ers to three miserable years of historic losses and frequent negative media attention. However, while much of the media and NBA thought Hinky was a joke, a hardcore group of fans in Philly supported his every move because he had a plan and refused to fall into the same trap many other franchises were stuck in, where their team wasn't good enough to win a title but wasn't bad enough to land a franchise-altering pick in the draft. Hinky had a clear plan and a path to success. But how did this all end? No one knows for sure yet. But Hinky won't be around to see it through, because he was forced out at the end of his third year. Maybe he was forced out because people saw him as a fraud due to all of his losing? Or maybe the NBA was afraid that Hinky finally found a way to turn a franchise around and were scared that his plan might actually work. Because if Hinky was successful, it would show how lopsided the NBA is and how not competing is really the best option teams have to turn it around. And in a league where they try their best to sell the league as competitive, Hinky was the problem.